हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल जर्नी विथ विजय कुमार श्रीवास्तव टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट द टाइटल प्लांट माइक्रोन्यूट्रिएंट्स माइक्रोन्यूट्रिएंट्स आर द एलिमेंट्स विच आर नीडेड इन स्मॉल क्वांटिटी इवन दो दे आर प्लेइंग इंपॉर्टेंट रोल सो वी विल डिस्कस इन डिटेल्स अबाउट दीज माइक्रोन्यूट्रिएंट्स सो लेट्स मूव ऑन माइक्रोन्यूट्रिएंट्स आर इसेंशियल एलिमेंट्स दैट आर यूज्ड बाय प्लांट इन स्मॉल क्वांटिटीज These plant food elements are used in very small amounts but they are just as important to plant development and profitable crop production is the major nutrients especially they work behind the scene as activators of many plant functions for most micronutrients crop uptake is less in spite of this low requirement critical plant functions are limited if micronutrients are unavailable and this deficiency result in plant abnormalities reduced growth and ultimately resulting in lower yield micronutrients are required to the plant in very small quantities even though they are playing important role in plant functioning and these nutrients can be described as zinc zn boron b iron fe copper cu magnesium mn molybdenum mo and chlorine cl so we will discuss in details about the nutrient functioning and their deficiency symptoms in this chapter so let's proceed here we have shown the plant nutrients deficiency symptoms appearance on plant system and it's depending upon the mobility of nutrients in plant system as you micronutrients are concerned zinc and molybdenum are highly mobile in plant so their deficiency symptoms are appearing on old leaves or mid leaves because these nutrients are carried over to the new leaves and young leaves so basically the observations will be found on old leaves is iron magnesium silicon and copper is concerned their deficiency symptoms will appear on young leaves or mid leaves because these are moderate mobility nutrients as boron is concerned it is immobile in plant system so the deficiency symptoms will absorbed on young emerging leaves now first we will start with micronutrient zinc zinc was one of the first micronutrient recognized as essential for plants and one of the most commonly limiting yield factor zinc is taken by plants in the form of cation and it aids plant growth hormones and enzymatic activity in the plant system zinc is necessary for chlorophyll production and also necessary for carbohydrate formation it is playing very very important role for starch formation and aids essential role in seed formation although zinc is required only in a small amount but high yields are impossible without zinc element so it is playing one of the important role as plant yield factor and its growth and proper functioning is concerned now deficiency symptoms of zinc element there will be dusty brown spots appearance on upper leaves and there will be observation of stunted growth of plants which will cause decrease in tilling and increase in spikelet sterility a spikelet sterility means there will be a spikelets but no grain filling or seed formation and it will result in chaffy seeds upper leaves will show intervenal chlorosis where there will be yellowness and there will be eventual whitening of the affected leaves and formation of streaks on lower leaves in absence of zinc or in deficiency the leaves may be a small distorted and it will form a rosette appearance and as the zinc sources are concerned we can apply zinc sulfate zinc carbonate zinc chloride zinc chelates and zinc oxide which are available in the market and it can be go for a spray application with foliar or other methods second micronutrient is boron boron exists primarily in soil solution is in iron form 
which is most commonly form taken up by the plants. Boron is one of the most important micronutrients affecting membrane stability and boron supports the structural and functional integrity of plant cell membranes and it is essential for seed development and cell wall formation and boron promotes maturity of the crop. Boron is essential for germination of pollen grains and growth of pollen tubes which is very very important for seed setting. So, boron application is generally recommended while flowering period of the crops. And boron is also necessary for sugar translocation and affects nitrogen and carbohydrates availability. Now deficiency symptoms of boron. The symptoms will appear first at the growing points. Because boron is immobile in plant system, so the new emerging leaves, new points will show the expression of deficiency. There will be white and rolled leaf tips of young leaves and it will result in reduction in plant height. There will be also observation of death of growing points but new tillers continue to emerge during severe deficiency. Plant will be unable to produce panicles if affected by boron deficiency because it causes sterility in the spikelets. The primary root develop thick swollen root tips with numerous short secondary roots developing close to the tip giving a witch broom symptoms. Because there will be a appearance of a tillering which will give the appearance of witch broom structure. And supply of boron to make up the deficiency can be done by anhydrous borax or fertilizer borate or borax application which are available in the market. And these fertilizers, boron micronutrient sources can be applied along with other fertilizers. Next micronutrient is iron. Plant takes iron in the form of cation and iron is essential for crop growth and food production. And iron promotes the formation of chlorophyll which play important role in photosynthesis. Iron acts as an oxygen carrier and reactions involving cell division and growth. Iron is a component of many enzymes associated with energy transfer, nitrogen reduction and fixation and lignin formation. As the deficiency symptoms of iron is concerned, there will be intervenal chlorosis which will occur on the emerging and young leaves from the base. But in some cases from the tip there will be eventual bleaching of the new growth. When severe deficiency is there, the entire plant may be light green in color. Even the stems appear chlorotic. At this point, the chlorotic symptoms are irreversible even if correctional measures are taken. So, the measures should be applied in early phase otherwise it will not give the solution. And the iron sources are is a soluble ferrous sulphate which contains 20 to 33 percent of iron, ferrous ammonium sulphate which contains 14 percent iron and there are iron chelates also which are having 5 to 14 percent of iron content and it should be applied timely to get recovery from the deficiency or shortage of the nutrients. nutrients. Next micronutrient is copper. Copper having role in catalyzing several plant processes. Copper activates enzymes and catalyzes reactions in several plant growth processes. And it plays a major function in photosynthesis and having indirect role in chlorophyll production. Major is having major functional role during reproductive stage. It increases sugar content, intensifies color of the plant and produce. And the presence of copper is closely linked to vitamin A production and it helps to ensure successful protein synthesis. And it also improves the flavor of fruits and vegetables and improving other qualities also. In deficiency condition of copper, the plant growth will be slow 
and plants remain stunted with distortion of the young leaves and death of the growing point. In deficiency, the leaves are developing chlorotic streaks on either side of the midrib. In some species, a tinge of bluish green appears and especially over the veins. And this is followed by impaired flower development that includes reduced size, premature abscission or abortion. In deficiency cases, the new leaves do not unroll and distal parts of the leaves maintain a needle-like appearance, whip-like structure. And there will be reduced tilting and increased spikelet sterility, which will ultimately result in less grain formation and less yielding. To overcome the deficiency of copper, there are different copper sources available like cupric sulphate and copper oxide which should be spread on time. Another micronutrient is manganese. Manganese having functions as a part of certain enzyme systems. Manganese activates several important metabolic reactions and plays a direct role in photosynthesis. Manganese also accelerates germination and maturity and increases the availability of phosphorus and calcium to the plant. And magnesium is often required with zinc application because whenever the zinc deficiency symptoms are appearing, it is correlated with magnesium. So, at that same time, both magnesium and zinc should be applied to overcome the deficiency symptoms appearing in plants. In deficiency symptoms of magnesium, the plant will show intervenal chlorosis of young leaves, while Older leaves and plants will be remain generally green in color. In severe deficiency symptoms, the plant will show the stunted growth symptoms. The young and recently matured leaves develop chlorosis followed by stippling of necrosis on recently matured leaves. And the flowering is also affected. It will be strongly inhibited. And there will be drastic reduction of suit and root growth which is common symptoms in case of magnesium deficiency. To overcome the deficiency symptoms of magnesium, the magnesium resource sources are available like magnesium sulphate or magnesium chloride which should be have timely application to get rid of these adverse effects. Molybdenum is another important micronutrient which is a trace element found in the soil and it is required for the synthesis and activity of the enzyme nitrate reductase. Molybdenum aids in the formation of legume nodules which is very very important for biological nitrogen fixation. Molybdenum is vital for the process of symbiotic nitrogen fixation by rhizobia bacteria in legume root nodules. Considering molybdenum's importance in optimizing plant growth, it is needed to convert inorganic phosphates to organic form in the plant. And it is fortunate that molybdenum deficiencies are relatively rare in most agriculture cropping areas. So it is not having much more impact on crops. The deficiency symptoms of molybdenum as frequently appear similar to nitrogen deficiency. Older and middle leaves become sclerotic first and in some instances the leaf margins are rolled and growth and flower formation are restricted. To overcome the deficiency of molybdenum, the molybdenum sources which are available like sodium molybdate and ammonium molybdate. Next micronutrient is chlorine. Plants take up chlorine in the chloride anion form and chlorine is active in energy reactions in the plant. Most chlorines which are available in anion form in soils comes from salt trapped in parent materials, marine aerosols and volcanic emissions. Chlorine is classified as micronutrient and it is required by plants in a small quantities and this chlorine interfaces with phosphorus uptake 
and having role in enhancing maturity of small grains on some soil in deficiency of chlorine the younger leaves will be having chlorotic nature and plants will having easily wilting conditions in case of wheat the plant diseases will infest in the plant when chlorine is deficient so the chlorine deficiency is correlated with disease infestation in case of wheat crop as per the studies the chlorine source chlorine sources which are available like potassium chloride which is also known as muriate of potassium mop magnesium chloride and ammonium chlorides so it should be applied timely to supply the chlorine to the plant in deficiency cases silicon is also playing important role as a micronutrients the leaves and culms become soft and droopy by increasing the mutual shedding in case of deficiency and it reduces the photosynthetic activities severe silicon deficiency reduces the number of panicles and the number of field spikelets so this is very very critical to getting the yields and proper grain filling of the spikelets silicon deficient plants will be susceptible to lodging the silicon sources which are available like calcium silicate potassium silicate and blast furnace slag etc which can be used timely to overcome the deficiency symptoms of silicon here the deficiency symptoms of various micronutrients are summarized in a deficiency chart of micronutrients as a color representation which are indicative features is boron deficiency is concerned the light general chlorosis is recorded there will be death of growing points deformation of leaves with areas of discoloration and the discoloration of leaf buds breaking and dropping of buds are also important features in case of deficiency so there should be proper care taking and applications of a, a, a sprays of fertilizers which are having the supplement nature of boron otherwise the flowering synthesis of grains filling will be impacted as a chlorine symptoms are concerned there will be chlorosis and wilting of especially young leaves and the deficiency symptoms are rarely seen and these are not common symptoms in the general growing conditions as a copper deficiency is, is concerned there will be light overall chlorosis the nature of leaf tip dieback symptoms and tips are twisted and giving weep like a structure and there will be, will be loss of turgidity in young leaves as a other symptoms there will be pale yellow to pink color between the veins and wilting and dropping is the common symptoms in case of iron deficiency chlorosis or yellowing between the veins of new leaves is the main specific symptoms if other symptoms we will see there will be leaves of pale yellow color but there will be no spots and the major veins are remains green as a molybdenum deficiency symptoms is related it is similar to the deficiency symptoms of nitrogen deficiency where general chlorosis or yellowing of young leaves are reported and there will be chlorosis of oldest leaves the leaves are light green or lemon yellow or sometimes orange a tint color and there will be a spots on whole leaf except veins and there will be sticky secretions from under the leaf now magnesium deficiency symptoms there will be chlorosis or yellowing between the veins of new leaves and these symptoms are giving the same representation of iron and deficiency the leaves will be pale yellow in color but veins and ventules are dark green and they are reticulated as a zinc deficiency is concerned the plants will have a stunted growth there will be reduction in internode length and young leaves having a smaller than normal and rosette form is formed so here if we see the leaves will be having pale yellow color narrow having short veins dark green 
एंड डार्क स्पॉट्स ऑन लीव्स एंड एजेज आर ऑब्जर्व्ड नव वी विल फोकस ऑन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय द मोस्ट कॉमन मेथड ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय एप्लीकेशन फॉर क्रॉप इज सोयल एप्लीकेशन रिकमेंडेड एप्लीकेशन रेट यूजली आर लेस ऑन एन एलिमेंटल बेसिस सो यूनिफॉर्म एप्लीकेशन ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय सोर्सेज सेपरेटली इन द फील्ड इज डिफिकल्ट देर फोर बोथ ग्रेनुलर एंड फ्लूड लिक्विड नाइट्रोजन फॉस्फोरस पोटेशियम फर्टिलाइजर्स एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर्स आर कॉमनली यूज एज करियर ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय इंक्लूडिंग माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय विथ मिक्सड फर्टिलाइजर इज ए कन्वीनियंट मैथड ऑफ एप्लीकेशन एंड अलाउज मोर यूनिफॉर्म डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विथ कन्वेंशनल एप्लीकेशन इक्विपमेंट कॉस्ट आर ऑल्सो रिड्यूस्ड बाई इलिमिनेटिंग ए सेपरेट एप्लीकेशन देर आर वेरियर फोर मैथड्स ऑफ अप्लाइंग माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय विथ मिक्सड फर्टिलाइजर्स लाइक फर्स्ट वन इन कॉर्पोरेशन विथ ग्रेनुलर फर्टिलाइजर्स वेयर द इन कॉर्पोरेशन ड्यूरिंग मैन्युफैक्चर रिजल्ट इन यूनिफॉर्म डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय थ्रो आउट ग्रेनुलर एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर्स सो हेयर द माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय आर इन कॉर्पोरेटेड ड्यूरिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग स्टेज एलोंग एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर सो दीज फर्टिलाइजर्स आर अप्लाइड एलोंग विथ एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर्स डायरेक्टली सेकेंड मेथड इज बल्क ब्लैंडिंग विथ ग्रेनुलर फर्टिलाइजर्स बल्क ब्लैंडिंग प्रोड्यूस फर्टिलाइजर ग्रेड दैट प्रोवाइड द रिकमेंडेड माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय रेट्स अनफॉर्चुनेटली न्यूट्रिय सेग्रीगेशन इज कॉमन रिजल्टिंग इन अन इवन न्यूट्रिय डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन थर्ड इज कोटिंग ऑन टू ग्रेनुलर फर्टिलाइजर्स कोटिंग पाउडर्ड माइक्रोन्यूट्रियस ऑन टू ग्रेनुलर नेट एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर्स डिक्रीजेज द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ सेग्रीगेशन एंड इट विल बी अवेलेबल टू द प्लांट्स फोर्थ इज मिक्सिंग विथ फ्लूड फर्टिलाइजर्स मिक्सिंग माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय विथ फ्लूड फर्टिलाइजर्स हैज बिकम ए पॉपुलर मैथड ऑफ एप्लीकेशन कीपिंग इन माइंड कंपिटेबिलिटी टेस्ट शुड बी मेड बिफोर टैंक मिक्सिंग ऑपरेशन ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय विथ फ्लूड फर्टिलाइजर्स आर अटेम्प्ट सस्पेंशन फर्टिलाइजर्स आर ऑल्सो यूज एज ए माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय कैरियर्स एज वेल नव विल फोकस ऑन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय द मोस्ट कॉमन मैथड ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय एप्लीकेशन फॉर क्रॉप इज सोयल एप्लीकेशन रिकमेंडेड एप्लीकेशन रेट यूजली आर लेस ऑन एन एलिमेंटल बेसिस सो यूनिफॉर्म एप्लीकेशन ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय सोर्सेज सेपरेटली इन द फील्ड इज डिफिकल्ट देर फोर बोथ ग्रेनुलर एंड फ्लूड लिक्विड नाइट्रोजन फॉस्फोरस पोटेशियम फर्टिलाइजर्स एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर्स आर कॉमनली यूज एज करियर ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय इंक्लूडिंग माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय विथ मिक्सड फर्टिलाइजर इज ए कन्वीनियंट मैथड ऑफ एप्लीकेशन एंड अलाउज मोर यूनिफॉर्म डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विथ कन्वेंशनल एप्लीकेशन इक्विपमेंट कॉस्ट आर ऑल्सो रिड्यूस्ड बाई इलिमिनेटिंग ए सेपरेट एप्लीकेशन देर आर वेरियर फोर मैथड्स ऑफ अप्लाइंग माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय विथ मिक्सड फर्टिलाइजर्स लाइक फर्स्ट वन इन कॉर्पोरेशन विथ ग्रेनुलर फर्टिलाइजर्स वेयर द इन कॉर्पोरेशन ड्यूरिंग मैन्युफैक्चर रिजल्ट इन यूनिफॉर्म डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय थ्रो आउट ग्रेनुलर एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर्स सो हेयर द माइक्रोन्यूट्रिय आर इन कॉर्पोरेटेड ड्यूरिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग स्टेज एलोंग एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर सो दीज फर्टिलाइजर्स आर अप्लाइड एलोंग विथ एन पी के फर्टिलाइजर्स डायरेक्टली सेकेंड मैथड इज बल्क ब्लैंडिंग विथ ग्रेनुलर फर्टिलाइजर्स Bulk blending produces fertilizer grade that provide the recommended micronutrient rates. Unfortunately, nutrient segregation is common, resulting in uneven nutrient distribution. Third is coating onto granular fertilizers. Coating powdered micronutrients onto granular net NPK fertilizers decreases the possibility of segregation and it will be available to the plants. Fourth is mixing with fluid fertilizers. Mixing micronutrients with fluid fertilizers has become a popular method of application. Keeping in mind, compatibility tests should be made before tank mixing operations of micronutrients with fluid fertilizers are attempted. 
Suspension fertilizers are also used as a micronutrient carriers as well. In addition to application with mixed fertilizer, there is another method, foliar sprays. Foliar sprays are widely used to apply micronutrients, especially iron and manganese for many crops. Soluble inorganic salts generally are as effective as synthetic chelates in foliar sprays. So the inorganic salts usually are chosen because of lower costs. Suspected micronutrient deficiency may be diagnosed with foliar spray trials with one or more micronutrients but tissue sampling is the most common method to determine deficiencies during the growing season. Correction of deficiency symptoms usually occurs within the first several days and then the entire field could be sprayed with the appropriate micronutrient source. Inclusion of stickers or spreader agents in the spray is suggested to improve adherence of the micronutrient source to the foliage. Caution should be used because of leaf burn due to high salt concentration or inclusion of certain compounds in foliar sprays are reported where it will cause damage to the foliage. So the different recommended practices should be applied for foliar spray of micronutrients and addition of the surfactants or stickers or spreading agents. There are various advantages of foliar sprays like application rates are much lower than rates for soil application. So there will be saving of cost and it can be also applied with other fertilizers. There will be uniform application in case of foliar applications which can be easily obtained. And response to the applied nutrient is almost immediate. So deficiencies can be corrected during the growing season as early as possible. There are some disadvantages also related to foliar spray. Like leaf burn may result if salt concentration of sprays are too high. The nutrient demand often is high when the plants are small and leaf surface is insufficient for foliar absorption. Maximum yield may not be possible if spraying is delayed until deficiency symptoms appear. And there is little residual effect from foliar spray also. And application costs are higher if more than one spray is needed unless they can be combined with pesticide spray applications or other chemicals spray. So this presentation was all about plant micronutrients. Hope this will be useful to all of you. Thank you very much. I have given here my YouTube channel details journey with Vijay Kumar Srivastava. Having request, please visit the channel, subscribe it and provide your kind and valuable feedback. Thank you.